Hey guys, welcome back to season one, episode two of our little how-to videos. Today we're gonna work on mounting your bindings. Um, again, not gonna get too tech, just gonna run through some things. Um, binding mounting is really personal preference, so basically gonna try and teach you how to uh, find what's right for you. So today we're gonna be mounting our AU binding prototype onto the Connie Broadkiller board. Um, both of these run with a standard four hole pattern. Um, everyone except Burton will run this. You've, you've seen them hopefully before. You've probably got them on your bindings right now. Um, just, yeah, you've got like a, a standard four hole pattern. Uh, like this, kind of see it. All right, so first thing you're gonna to wanna to work out is how far you want your stance to be apart. Um, if you've never snowboarded before, there's a couple of tips you can either use shoulder width, or some people measure from your knee to your ankle. Um, basically give you an idea of how far you want it apart. Um, once we talk about mounting, I'll talk about like, you can move it around and play around and work out what feels right for you. Also like, once you go out and ride on the hill for a day, you'll probably find you wanna change some stuff anyway. Alright, so once you've worked out where you want your bindings to be in terms of like stance width on the board, um, it's then to work, time to work out your angles. Uh, if you have a look on your base plate, there's probably a little arrow up here. What that correlates to is on your bindings, you have uh, a num bunch of numbers up here, which is just the, the angle. Um, generally goes out to like 30 degrees. You probably don't want to put it at 30. Um, I run a bit of switch, so I would set my front binding at uh, 15 and my back binding at minus 12. If you don't ride as much switch, you can bring it in a bit, maybe set it at you know 10 or even zero if you're only gonna go forward. Um, even if you're setting up a power board, you probably wanna put that at zero as well. Or if you're gonna be riding powder on a regular board and put the stance back, um, you can put it at zero as well. Um, Again, just play around with it, see what feels comfortable. Like you might put it out to a 12 and it might hurt your knees, so you need to go like in a bit or whatever. It's easy to change where on the hill, you just get a screwdriver, a couple of bits and shift a little. All right, so also if you've got these type of mounting plates, most of the four holes come with them nowadays. Um, they also have you help you be able to change up your stance a little bit. You can either run them down the length of the board uh, like this, so if you're on the last hole you can get a bit more extra stance or, stance, or you can turn it this way and use it to put a different, uh, like, you know, get your bindings into a different thing if you're getting a lot of toe, toe drag or heel drag. Um, most people move them that way though, so you can just really get your stance to where you want it to be. Alright, so when it comes to actually putting the bindings on, generally I won't over tighten them. You just put them in loose to hold it. Um, it helps if you want to make just any minor adjustments or if you notice anything's moved um, while you're mounting them. Um, obviously, you know, the same as everything you do, do it in like a, a star pattern, don't, you know, tighten it, just go around, tighten up a little bit. Um, what you'll probably find is when you actually go out and ride for the first time, um, if you've set it up like today, it's, you know, 20 something degrees, once you get on the hill and it's like minus five or whatever, um, the plastic and the metal will probably shrink a bit, so you might have to like tighten them up. Um, before you get on the hill and then you might do two runs and you have to tighten again. It's pretty normal. Uh, when it comes to actually screwing the boards in, the bindings into your board, don't use a drill. Um, some people use a drill. I'd advise against it. The last thing you want to do is strip the thread on your binding mounts because once you've done that, the board's ruined. Like it's really hard to replace those. There's some places it'll do it, but you know, if you've stripped it and you do it again, it's not gonna fit a regular binding screw. So it's just gonna cause you chaos. Um, also don't use anything like glue, like a Loctite or something like that. Um, especially if you wanna change your, your stance around. It's just, it's a bad idea. All right, so depending on your binding, you might also have these kind of like footbed type things as well. Um, it's basically just to help with um, like getting any toe drag. Um, depending on the size of your boots, you know, you just adjust it using the, the different like positions for the screw there. Um, if you're only riding like a, a small boot or the smallest kind of boot on the binding, just set it at the smallest. Even if you're probably riding the biggest, you can probably set it at the smallest too. It just, you know, it just get a feel for it and see what's happening. If, you, if you're riding it short and you need to extend it out, extend it out. So we get heaps of questions about wide boards and the bindings. Um, 
Generally, I find you don't need a wide board when you think you do. Um, like I ride an 11 or 11 and a half boot on a 153 regular. Um, my first board was like a 156 wide. Um, I wouldn't dream of riding that right now. Um, you can play with binding placement and make a board work for you. Uh, you might get some uh, toe or heel drag if you're going on a super sharp turn, but like it's not gonna happen as much as like, you know, it's gonna suck riding a wide board. Alright, so here we go. Road killer set up with a 24 inch stance with 15 at the front, 12 at the back. Uh, set centered. Um, if you were riding power, what you can do is you can bring this bring this back a little bit and also drop this back if it's not at the very back stance. Uh, just helps you keep the nose up. Um, but if you're just riding around on the hill or you're riding park or anything, you probably want to keep it centered. Um, and with this back foot, depending on what kind of riding you're doing, you can, you know, to tweak it a little bit. Uh, if you want to do Euro carbs, you can put it into like positive, but no, nah, no way you want to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, just basically play around with it, see what's comfortable. Um, you know, ride for it for a few hours if it sucks. Do it. Um, you know, I found even though I ride with the, the widest stance now that I'm getting older after a few hours, I have to bring it in a little bit anyway because it starts hurting my knees. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Probably do a second video on bindings um, about how to set up uh, all the components, like your straps and everything, to make it comfortable and make it work properly. Um, but yeah, this has just been a bit of a basic thing about how to set up your bindings. But yeah, just play with it, see what's comfortable. It's up to you.